Hey everyone and welcome back to another Nielsen Networking video. In this video, we are going to show you how as efficiently and quickly as possible how to download, install, and configure VirtualBox on either your Windows, Mac, or Linux system. And to you know, throw it up a notch higher than that, we are also going to download, install, and configure a Kali Linux virtual machine inside your VirtualBox infrastructure. And we're going to try to do this all, as I said, efficiently while maintaining integrity, but we're going to try to do it a little bit of a speedrunner style for those of you gamers out there. All right, let's get to it. First thing first, open up your favorite uh, web browser. Go out to virtualbox.org. We're going to download right here, click this button, and I'm going to select Windows as my host. You would pick whatever yours is if you're on a Mac, Mac, Linux on a Linux. Kali.org is where we're headed next. I will throw all URLs I put in today to get software in the description. No need to worry about following them. I'm talking fast enough, I'm sure. Um, it's already driving you crazy. So two options here that are the main recommended ones. We want the one on the right, virtual machine pre-built image. This is going to be the quickest to get us up and running on Kali Linux inside of VirtualBox. If we went this route, this would actually be an ISO image where we'd have to take step by step through the entire Kali Linux process. Like if you were to take a Windows installation CD and install Windows manually, we have to pick all those options from time zones to hard drive space to partitions to all that junk. We don't want to do that and we don't need to do that um, for what we're trying to accomplish. So we're going to click on this. It's going to take us down here. You're going to get two options, well, four. We, we want the lower right one that says VirtualBox Weekly. We're going to hit download on that. And to top off our downloads, we're going to need to get something known as 7-Zip, which is a WinRAR, WinZip type product. It's it's just to unarchive archived files. So we're going to go ahead and, or folders, pick 64-bit, unless you happen to be running a 32-bit, which I doubt. Let that get done. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into the folder of downloads and we're going to run the 7-zip because it's a piece of cake to do. And I'm going to leave it on the default installation folder. I'm going to close out. And now while that's waiting to download, I'm going to go over here and do right click, run as admin on the VirtualBox installer. And I'm going to wait. And I'm going to hit next here on the first window. And this is worth noting, if you want to change where you're installing VirtualBox, now is the time to do it. You can always change where you locate your virtual machines later, but the installation of the actual VirtualBox hypervisor needs to be down, done now. And we're installing what's known as a type two hypervisor, meaning it needs an operating system to run on it. So that's what VirtualBox is. I'm going to leave it where it is because I only have one hard drive. At, so there's really only play, one place it can go. You may want to move it. Warning, this is just letting you know you may get disconnected while installing this from the internet. No big deal, it's just a bump in the road. Um, meaning while they install their virtual networking inside VirtualBox, you might lose a connection. I've never had this happen, but it's there, so I thought I'd tell you. This is telling you that you are missing dependencies and it's willing to download them if you want. Python Core and WinApp or Win32 app. Only reason not to download this would be if you already had these two um, programs installed and you were afraid overriding them would cause some kind of conflict with other software. I don't, you probably won't either. So go ahead and hit yes, and then hit install. And we are done with the installation of VirtualBox. All right, while we wait for that to finish, we can go ahead and go in our VirtualBox that we've now set up and we can set up the network while we're waiting. So what we're gonna want to do is click right here and go to network. And we're going to want to go to NAT, NATWEC, ugh, Network Address Translation, and we're going to want to create a new one. And the reason you want to do this is if you're going to put more than one virtual machines in this VirtualBox infrastructure, you're going to want to maybe to be able to see each other. If you're going to use them for some kind of security testing, maybe you want to run some vulnerability scans or um, maybe you want to practice brute force attacks to see what they look like. You know, I'm just throwing ideas out there. Kali Lynx has a lot of um, cybersecurity tools, you know, such as those password cracking utilities. Um, what else do they have in there? They have reverse engineering tools. They have sniffing, spoofing, all kinds of stuff that if you create a virtual lab, you're going to need to create a virtual network, which is what we're doing right here. So we're going to go ahead and go to properties or double click. I'm going to just leave this as, well, actually, you know what? I'll change this to Nielsen Networking Network. Okay. And we're just going to leave the IPv subnet on the, what it is. You can, if you need DHCP, go ahead and leave this enabled. I'm going to because I do. If you wanted to use a static, you could still keep this enabled and then just assign a static within this um, subnet range. I would leave IPv6 unchecked unless you have a reason for IPv6. I don't. 
and it's just going to cause me more grief. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. I'm going to apply it. And now my virtual network will be ready as soon as our Kali Linux installation gets done or download gets done. Okay, I think it's done downloading. So we're going to go up here to downloads because uh, I closed the little window on the bottom. And what you're going to want to do is go to show and folder. You could always browse to downloads this way, but anyways. Um, so here's where 7-Zip is going to come to play. Without 7-Zip, you are not going to be able to proceed, so go get it. Um, but what you're going to want to do is right-click, go to the 7-Zip menu, and do extract files. Now, this is a critical step in this whole video. If you do this wrong, this will not work. Don't get mad at me. I warned you. Uh, what you need to do is where you extract two, get it out of the download folders. Get it out of wherever it is, unless you already moved it somewhere you want it to live. Because what we're going to do is we're going to be extracting the actual virtual machine into the location where it's going to reside. Meaning, if it's in downloads and one day you decide, hey, I need to clear up some room because I want to install a Red Hat Linux machine. And I need to clear out those downloads. You delete it. VirtualBox is going to look and say, well, this used to be in downloads. Now it's gone. And it's going to give you a big error that says, sorry, you are out of luck. And you will be out of luck because you will have deleted that virtual machine that you had been working on. Um, so you've heard the warning. I'm going to go ahead and put it where I put my virtual machines, which is in the C drive under virtual machines. Um, you could do put this wherever you want. Again, I don't have a secondary hard drive. And this is just a lab for a video. So go ahead and hit OK. Hit OK. It's going to extract. And that takes a little bit of time. OK, and that should be done. We're good. And now we actually can get into VirtualBox again. And we can go here. You're going to want to click this and go to welcome and go to add. And we're going to go ahead and go to this PC. We're going to go to C. We're going to go to virtual machines. We're going to go in here and here. And then we're going to pick this machine right here. Hit open. And you literally now have a Kali Linux machine inside your virtual box, assuming it turns on. So let's find out if it will. So we're going to go ahead and double click it. So it's going to boot up. And while it's doing this, if you were to click on the window right here, you can't get your mouse out. The only way to get your mouse out is to hit the right control. And that will allow you to bring your mouse out where you could actually reduce this down um, and move it around. So just an FYI, it tells you right here, but I didn't see that. And I was like, why is my mouse not coming out? And it was kind of annoying. So anyways, here we go. We're booting in. Uh, and while it's doing this, I'll just take this time. If you have enjoyed this video so far, I would greatly appreciate a like if you could drop it. We're a new channel. Um, all the likes help. Subscribe if you want to see future content. That even helps us more. We've done a lot of videos and we're, we're getting a lot of views for a new channel, but we're not getting a lot of subscribers. So if you could just smash that subscribe button, it doesn't cost you anything, doesn't take you any, any time, um, but it helps us out. So I would appreciate it. That's my spiel. Thank you very much. And let's get on with this. Once this thing decides to boot us up, we should get a uh, Kali Linux boot up here. And here we go. Here's the splash screen coming. If you hit escape while its splash screen is going, you can actually see what Linux is doing in the background. Um, and then you are. Here you are. This is our login. So we're going to go with Kali Kali. Login password Kali Kali. We're going to go ahead and hit enter here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that will make it nice and big for us. So it's like we are actually in a Kali um, Linux machine. It doesn't look like we're in a Windows machine anymore, which is cool because then you minimize go back here and now you're back at your Windows box. That's what's so neat about VirtualBox. So let's do a few quick checks. Let's make sure we can ping out. Let's go to our friend Google. All right, looks like we're good there. Let's ping www.ford.com. We can ping Ford. All right, let's go to nasus.com. Looking good there. And so we're getting connectivity, we're getting name resolution. Let's see if we can get our web browser to load. And let's just go to, let's go to Disneyland.com and see how much they're charging people to go there. Actually, we're not going to do that. We're just going to make sure it loads. I don't want to know how much they're charging people to go there. So anyways, as you can see, it's loading. Um, we're good here. Last thing before I leave you is if you did want to get in here, these are all those um, tools I mentioned earlier, all those security tools, you know, sniffing, spoofing, um, 
password attacks, all this, all these things that you could use in a lab to test them out and see how they how they actually operate. So when you see them in those articles, or if you don't have a complete understanding, you can actually go in and test them. You can run some Nmap port scans. You can kind of, you can do a lot of very neat stuff, especially if you're just learning cybersecurity. This is a great Linux distribution to do it on. And it's so neat to have it inside that virtual box because when you're done, so you're done with this, you want to go back, you know, let's, you want to go back and, I don't know, play a video game or something. You go ahead here, you shut this down, you're done. You know, you go out of here, you close out VirtualBox, and you are back on your Windows machine. No memory being taken up, anything at all. It only takes up resources when it's turned on, other than hard drive. It does take your hard drive space. So, again, if you like if you like this video, I'd appreciate a like. If you want to get future content, please subscribe. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. We're going to give you great content moving forward. Um, and other than that, you have a great rest of your day, um, and we'll see you in the next video.